Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we'll be talking about customizing Chrome for your classroom, and we're very excited to have Sean Beavers and Stacy um, Beck, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, um, hosting this webinar for us today. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Sean and Stacy. A few, uh, while I do that transfer, um, a few housekeeping notes. Please, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A window, and we will uh, be sure to answer them at the end of the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and we will be giving you a um, copy of the question and answer transcript. So um, you know, please be aware that we are recording this. So with that, um, I will go ahead and transfer it over to Stacy, who can begin. Okay. All right. Let's see if we've got this going. Share. Stacy, do you go ahead and introduce myself while you're getting that set? Sure. Trying to share desktop here. Ed, John. Uh, my name is Sean Beavers. Uh, I work for SOIDA, which stands for Southwestern Ohio Instructional Technology Association, which uh, I know is a mouthful, uh, but a technical consultant there, and I am also a Google Apps certified trainer. Okay. Can you see the screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, my name is Stacey Beamer. I am uh, the coordinator of digital learning technology at Grantwood AEA um, in Cedar Rapids. Uh, Google Apps for Education Certified Trainer and new Certified Teacher. So we just want to let everybody know, if, if you're looking at that title slide there, the link for this presentation is on the slide. And that also links to all of the resources that we're going to be talking about today. So don't feel like you have to take PS notes uh, you know, while we're going through this, because everything is available in the presentation. the first things that I wanted to talk about is, you know, uh, why choose Google Chrome? You know, why is it a good fit for education? And think, um, you know, back into the 1990s, what browsers were available. Um, you were probably just looking at Internet Explorer and, and Netscape Navigator. And I can remember Netscape Navigator in 1996 um, when I started uh, college, when I was a freshman in college. And over the years, you know, fast forward to 2011, and you hear some of the options that we have available, uh, you know, Opera, Firefox, Rock Melt, Safari, and, and Chrome. And I mean, this list, this list is exhaustive. I mean, there's other browsers out there. Um, only in that span of, of 15 years, if we look at the statistic, 43% um, of users are still browsing the web with Internet Explorer, um, which which find, uh, I guess, both saddening and, and pretty shocking. You know, even though the... Uh, the truth is, I mean, it's a, almost a smorgasbord of browsers out there. Most are still using Internet Explorer. Um, and so I'm going to you know, try to go through and, and explain to you, you know, why Chrome is a choice. So why I use Chrome as my daily driver, and, you know, that's the, the browser that I always go to, and it's actually the browser that we have on all the computers at SOIDA. Three things to come, come to mind. So first, you know, it's unique features. It's still and secure, and also it's extremely felt flexible. So it works the way that I want to work in a web-only environment. Those unique features that Chrome has, um, and I'm going to go through each of these a little bit more in depth here in a minute, but uh, one of them would be the Omnibox, like translation of websites, the tab page, and sync. To sync across your different browsers. So Omnibox is where you would be able to type in a URL, and all browsers have a uh, you know a, a URL press box at the top. But I think what is unique to Chrome is that you can type in your search query and also the URL. And I, I really like that when I'm working and, and trying to find new resources for the different classes I teach at SOIDA. It's very easy to type in what I'm searching for in the box instead of having to go to an alternate website or even click in a different part of the browser. It just really uh, speeds up, um, and makes me uh, much more productive. You also customize your own search engines, and those will get added by default. So if you go to YouTube, or you look, uh, I guess, if you shop Amazon or eBay, 
those up as well. So if I type in, for example, cars, I have the option to not only search Google, but also to search eBay. Auto translation, this little uh, message will pop up whenever you visit a that is not in your native language. And not that that happens, I guess, at least in uh, my line of work on a regular basis, but there are off. There is a chance that sometimes I do come across a resource or something that I want to take a look at that might be in German or in Japanese or in, or in a different language. And so Chrome will automatically prompt me to translate. And it, it does a fairly decent job of doing that. All right, right along the new tab page. Every time you click to add a new tab, you will see a list of your web apps. And Stacy and I are going to talk about what web apps are uh, and some of the available web apps that are in the Chrome Web Store a little bit later on in this webinar. Um, but there you can see some of mine. And yes, Angry Birds is a web app. So for those of you, if you were to know that from the uh, outset of this presentation, you can play Angry Birds in Chrome. So there goes your uh, entire weekend. Besides being able to see the web apps, you also have the most visited, and then also ones that you recently closed. So it's you know quick access uh, to links. My favorite things too about Chrome is the ability to sync the browser. And once you have the browser open, all the, the settings and the preferences, there's a wrench in the top right hand corner, and if you select that wrench and you go to options, and on a Mac, it's preferences. But if you go there, what this gives you the ability to do is go to personal stuff and set the sync. So you can decide then, if you're setting up all your options, do you want it to set the sync, do you want it to save your passwords, um, or from browser to browser, and I'll explain why that sync is important with those passwords saved in a second. But there's also also some autofills. So if you find yourself typing your name and address and zip code all over, over and over again, if you enable that autofill, it'll recognize those, fill, those fields and fill that form in really, really quickly. So one of the nice things is if you go up to the wrench and go to the personal stuff setup sync, you can decide what you want to sync across your Chrome browser. What this enables you to do is decide if you want to sync apps, autos, bookmarks, extensions, passwords, preferences, sync, all those things. And here's the thing right now. Um, I'm at school, and my school desktop computer, and I bookmark a website. Now, I could use Digo or some social bookmarking kind of site, but I decide to save it to my favorites in the browser, which is just quick and easy. So then I'm that night, and I need that website, and I don't have access to it. So the next thing about this sync here is that it will sync your bookmarks and it will sync apps. So I can customize my browser and launch onto Chrome at home and sync that computer as well. And then all the settings are there. So all those extensions we're going to talk about and passwords, autofills, bookmarks, themes, everything is right there for you. So my thing ever. Um, Along that, then another feature with Chrome is the security settings, and I'm, we're not going to get too technical, but just understand that Chrome has some built-in security settings already for you. One of them is the safe browsing, and so as you're browsing web, you could get a pop-up um, that will like, that will indicate to you that you might have be at a malicious site. Are you sure you want to proceed? Um, it'll also, block those spinning malware. Very nicely for you. Another feature that I really like is the auto updates. So you don't have to worry about people out there creating different viruses or that phishing stuff. It will automatically, Chrome will recognize that there is a new update. It'll warn you of the update. And then if you relaunch the browser, all of those updates are automatically in place. Okay, so now after we have that browser all synced and everything ready to go, beautiful thing is you can add some flexibility to the browser and you can customize it. This makes it very effective and efficient, I think. Other things is you can customize the theme. So I 
baseball theme on my browser right now, so you can kind of see that. Um, and then you can also add things called extensions and web apps. This is good, guys. Go ahead, Sean. Um, so this is the Chrome Web Store, and and you know uh, how many of you who are listening to this webinar, but you know if you've ever downloaded any apps, uh, I guess for an iOS device, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, uh, or even the Android market, it's it's set up in a similar fashion. So, uh, and this, this is the the storefront or the landing page for the Chrome Web Store, and uh, you know so I can click on you know the different app pages, I can look at the different extensions. Um, you know they have those different sections, new and noteworthy and and, and featured. And can take a look at um, you know what's available. If you find something that you're interested in, whether that's an extension uh, or a web app, and in this case, um, in the screenshot, we're looking at an extension called Voice Search, which I think Stacy's going to feature a little bit later on. But if you click on it, you'll be able to see sort of a description of what it says it does, which is always a good thing to read. And then also, you'll see user reviews and read those, and then there should be a, a rating in stars. Uh, and I believe it's up to five of, of what other people have given it. And if it's like something that you're interested in, then you do is click the Add to Chrome button, and that, that web or extension will be installed. I guess we should have probably prefaced that by saying that a lot of the apps, and I don't know what percentage, um, but most of them, at least that I've come across, are, are free. I've never... Uh, with the exception of one app, actually spent money on on something that I'm using currently. What are web apps? If you think about how um, we've been using software, I think for for, for a very long time, um, you know, when I purchase something, usually I would go into a brick and mortar store like Best Buy or CompUSA, Market City, and purchase it on a CD or DVD, and then you know, bring it home. I have to install it, you know, probably apply some updates, and that runs locally on my computer. So it's only on that machine. It's in the hard drive. If I want to use it on another computer, I have to either get another copy and you know put it on, on that computer. So you know it makes having that application in multiple places a real chore. And the nice thing about web apps is first of all there's nothing that you're installing locally on your computer. This all exists in the cloud or on the internet. So when you go to click uh, to install It'll all in your browser instead. So, you know, all these apps exist in your browser. Um, and there's a variety of ways, and I kind of touched on this when I talked about the Chrome Web Store, but there's a variety of ways that browse for them. So you can search by category, you know, and certainly look at education, but, you know, definitely look at some of the other categories because there's a lot of great stuff for education that's in the education category. Um, you also have new and noteworthy there's a top paid and staff pick section. And if you're looking for something specific, definitely use the search. You know, if I want to look for apps that might help me, um, you know, teach phonics, I'm going to type in phonics, or if I want to use something for, for math to teach me, uh, adding, subtracting, mixed numbers, I might type in fractions, you know, but you, you definitely want to use that search to your advantage. And there really is a web app for almost anything you can think of. Whether that's photo editing or editing video or word processing, I mean, you name it, there, there is one out there. So probably for almost every app that you have locally installed right now in your lab or on your desktop at home, there's probably a web app that you can use um, to replace it. So today we're going to share a, a couple of our favorite web apps. And the first one is Scratchpad, and this is free. And they're to it right in the presentation. So if this sounds good, you can uh, pre download this and, and install it in Chrome right away. And the reason I'm, I'm drawn to this app, or the reason I like it, it's for note taking. And I've tried a whole bunch of note taking apps uh, across sort of a variety of, of platforms on, on my phone and on Android. And um, I've stuck with Scratchpad because I like it uh, for mainly because it syncs with Google Docs. So notes are always available wherever I am, as long as I can get access to the web. Um, I have on my uh, Android phone, that syncs to Scratchpad as well. So any notes I make on my phone, they up in Scratchpad. And it's also available online and off. So even if you don't have that internet connection, you want to share notes, uh, it's, it's very easy to do. And I use this all the time. Again, when I'm browsing for things, looking for articles, 
um, for things that I teach or, or just for letter, it's really nice to, just to be able to click that and pull it up right away and, and jump down on a quick note. All right, Mong, um, next up is Aviary Feather. And this is a pretty basic photo editing uh, app. There are other ones out there. There's one called Picnic. There's also Pixlr. Uh, and there's a more advanced aviary, but I like this just because it's very simple and easy to, to use. I took fourth, fifth grade before um, going to Soita or joining Soita, and I definitely think that this would be appropriate for that age range. Um, because in that screenshot, that is the actual interface. So depending on what you want to do with the photo, you just click on those eggs. It's, it's very cute. Uh, and you can just simply either upload an image from your computer or use the images you are also if you find something through a Google image search or you have an image maybe in your Picasso web album you can paste that URL in there and edit it uh, and it also has some pretty powerful filters so you've got uh, the instant camera toy camera uh, old photo and retro so like it's very easy to use um, and I think it would be great for elementary kids it's... And, and my last pick um, for a web app is called MathBoard. And I was very surprised and also happy that they had this in the Chrome Web Store. I actually have this on my iPad. Um, and this actually is the only web app that I paid for. This was $4.9, um, but it allows you to practice basic math facts. So into the ones that are listed there, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, you can also practice cubes and square roots. Um, and it's completely customizable. So you can set up the range of numbers, of questions. Uh, also, you can set a time limit for and save the quizzes. They can go back and look at how well they did, compare it to the latest one that they've taken, and it keeps track of all that. And again, what's nice about it is it runs right in the browser, so there's nothing for me to install uh, on my local machine. A couple of my personal favorites right now that I've gotten from other teachers as well. Um, one of them is Quizlet. It also has um, an app for the ad and your Android phone. So it's really nice. It's, this goes through and it's kind of those traditional flashcards um, and a lot of quizzes and, and things are pre-made. So there's states and capitals, um, of language, vocabulary, things, um, facts, basic things like that. What it will do is let you go and select one of those flashcards and sets, and you can either do spelling with it or just do flip it, um, or rather flip it and check your own answers. Um, it will make some things. Uh, so you got crossword puzzles that will be incorporated with this. You can also customize this with your own um, kind of area, which is really, really nice. One of the things I really like about Quizlet, though, is there is an audio component. So if I want to say the word Alabama, um, I can, and it will actually read that out loud to me. So I'm thinking younger kids or even your English language learners using some of these kind of flashcard kind of things. So it's really, really nice. Um, another feature I like with Quizlet, too, is that it comes with some embed code. So if you create Quizlet with that and actually embed that within your own site, you absolutely can go copy that embed code and um, pop to a Google site for your classroom and it's all there for you. So this was one of my favorites. Another one that I is Quiet Right. It's Quiet Right. It's similar to that scratch pad. Um, but again, the things I like about this one is that you're able to publish and export this out once you're done. So it's really quick um, to actually have compose some writing. Um, and it saves those, and you can return back to it. It's also with iPads, so it'll set that account across devices, and you can access it internet access, which is really, really kind of slick. Um, one of the nice things I just want to highlight about the app, if you go into, Sean said this before, if you go into that app store and you look, there is an app for almost anything. PBS Kids has an app. Um, oh, the um, Pandora apps. There's a trading app. There's so many just different apps, and I would just say spend time going to that store and search and play and see what's going to work with your content area. If you have an app selected in your account and you edit it to Chrome and you sync it, 
you have it on any device where you think Google Chrome. So that's another powerful part of the, that thinking. On the web store, we have um, these things called extensions. So apps are like, like that square that you would download, so uh, application. Um, extensions just, I think, make your browser more efficient. When Sean and I were talking, we were just going and forth as we were preparing. It's like, what extensions do you use? Oh, I haven't heard of that one. What does that do? This is one of the things that makes it really efficient. Um, we're going to talk Goose is an extension um, that you can use in Chrome. That's one of my favorites. And then QuietTube is another one. So as you're working within your browser, it makes your browser experience a lot more efficient. Again, you can search extensions similar to the way you search apps. So you can do it by category or topic, or you can just use that right search. Okay, I'm going to highlight some of my favorite extensions. One of them is the voice search. And on there's a link right to the voice search extension. So if you're watching this presentation later or go to this presentation and you click on it, it'll take you to the store. You can download this app. But what the voice search does is it adds a, search, a voice recognition um, button to all of your fields. So if I'm in Google, and Google search, right in the field, there's a microphone. And if I select that, it will ask me to speak now. And it will, I can say, search for tigers. And it will fill the word for tigers right within my search. So um, think about our students, especially elementary students with spelling issues, that they can pronounce the word that they want to search for and put in that field. They can just select that microphone and fill in that field verbally. And, um, that teachers absolutely love. Um, it's really easy to do a screen capture on Mac, but sometimes if you're in a P on a PC in th that environment, it's not as quick and efficient. Um, so some things you do, one of them is screen capture by Google. So you can add this extension from the store. It will appear up in the bar across the top and actually capture part of your screen. So old higher screen. Really nice about this one is you can also, once you save it and select it you want to capture, you can mark it up. Um, some others that do this as well, there's an aviary extension that will let you do some screen captures, and there's one that's called Awesome Screenshots that will also let you capture part of your screen and then mark it up and save it. So when you're making those tutorials and direction sheets for your kids, this is a great tab, just right to click away right within your browser. Okay. Um, another one that I really like um, is the Google Dictionary. Um, we, you, some of our districts use NetTracker, which has this feature built in as you're searching. The fact that this can be built into any site as searching, I think, is really powerful. As you are on a website, you can turn on this extension, head up there, and if I select a word and click the dictionary, it's going to bring up that dictionary definition. And it will bring in synonyms, antonyms, and I believe there's also a pronunciation guide, so you can actually hear the words said aloud to you. Um, foreign words are automatically translated too, so um, again, for those ESL students, this is kind of a feature as well as for vocabulary. Developed. So that's Google Dictionary. I one that I love is the Google the URL shortener. This one, if you don't have it, get it. Uh, what this will let you do is it will add an extension to the top of your browser and it will let you shorten those URLs real quickly. So rather than it's kind of bit.ly or tiny URL, but the thing that makes this one, I think, even more powerful is you can have that shortened URL, um, get details about accessing that shortened URL, but you can get a QR code created right from that button. So if I select um, my URL shortener and select QR code, I have a QR code that I can use 
images in print or embedded within the site, which is really slick. I also decided I want to turn on uh, some social networking sharing within that. So I can link this directly to Evernote or Digo or Facebook or Twitter. So if I find a site, I want to send it out to some people via Twitter. I got right from this um, extension. Okay, um, this is one that um, it's called Quiet Tube. And notice the spelling because people will go in and search and they'll want to put two T's on it. But what Quiet Tube does is if you are on YouTube, for example, and in a YouTube video, what it do is it will add a little circle right next to the URL. So when the video is showing, will that circle appear? So the regular website, you won't see it. YouTube video and you'll see that circle. And um, it was nice when you're working on the fly and you're showing a YouTube video and you've got a bunch of junk around video, whether it's the pre-use or similar videos. If you click on that little circle, it will white out all of the other junk and just show you the video. Because sometimes you can go full screen, but sometimes um, you lose low quality on those YouTube videos. So it's just as easy to click that little and it will wipe out all that extra stuff. That is quiet YouTube. There's good one. Sean, a few of his favorites now. Hey, uh, I, I love extensions. Like Stacey was saying, I almost get giddy when I hear about a new one. I'll read about a new one on a website. And it's just like I want to install it in, in my uh, in my browser, it's ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> so I picked a couple of my top five um, because it was very hard to narrow this down. But um, probably number one I use a tremendous amount of is this App Jump App Launcher. Wow, you can get to your web apps by clicking that, that new tab button in Chrome. Um, App Jump, you know, because it's an extension, is right there next to your Omnibox, and it's very easy to click that and, and launch your. Um, other than web apps. So it gives you quick access to those without having to click the new tab button. Um, you can organize them into groups, which I think is, is fabulous. So you can see I've got productivity, photo editing, and others. And um, like I said, it's just a time saver. Another really sweet one is called Tab Rocket. And what they allows you to do is send tabs between your computers. So if you've ever been in this scenario where you've been at work or you've maybe been in a friend's house browsing the internet, I know that's uh, everybody does that on the weekends, go browse the internet with friends. But um, you would a tab from one computer to another one. So if I find something at work that's really fascinating and exciting and I want to send it to my computer at home, I can just click on Tab Rocket on the computer that I want to send it to. And if Chrome is open, that tab will open on the other computer instantaneously. Or is closed, the next time I open up Chrome, that tab will open. So it's a great way to pick up where you thought if you're looking at you know an article or something neat online, you send it to another computer with Tab Rocket. Along the same lines is Tab Cloud, and this lets you save multiple instances of your open windows and tabs. And this is been a boon for me, you know, doing lots of different types of Google uh, Apps for Education training or talking about Chrome, I can save um, different instances of my browser. And you can see in that screenshot, I've got ones uh, for uh, something I did on site, um, for, for a trade up, one for a Chrome presentation. And it saves all of my tabs. I can name these instances that I've saved. And then when I click on the uh, Tab Cloud extension, I can pick the one that I want to open back up, and it just opens up all those windows and all of those tabs uh, very, very quickly. So it's a great way to save your windows and tabs and then open those back up at a later time. And it syncs with your Google account. All right, journal.me is, is a new one that I came across. And so this Extent allows you to browse the web collaboratively with other people. And if you uh, click the extension, it create a unique, what they call channel for the page that you're on or for a website that you want to take a look at. And for this example, I'm using Google Body. And then I can invite others via email channel or 
You can also share it via URL. And at this point, it has a chat window, so you can chat with the other people. Uh, while you're looking at that site, everyone can and take control of the cursor. So if you need to point out different things on the site, and you can add sticky notes, uh, almost similar to the comments that you can add in, in, in the Google Doc. And so you can do that on each side. You browse, uh, browse and then at the bottom, it has a built-in Google search. So you can type in something that you want to look at or another website and go to that one and browse with a group of people. So undo tab close. Um, like I said, it was hard to narrow these down into five, but this is another one of my favorites. I in any, always tend to close tabs or, or you know, close window, and then I'm like, shoot, you know, I forgot the URL, or I, I don't know what I closed. So this will actually keep track of every single tab that you close in Chrome, and give you a list, you know, starting with the most recent, and then going, um, you know, back through time. So if you inadvertently close a tab, you can click on one of those uh, tabs that you closed and then reopen it immediately. And it's kind of hard to see uh, in that screenshot, but I think I currently have like 3,624 closed tabs. And uh, I, I probably need to clear that out, but and it keeps that historical record of all the ones that you've closed so you can easily reopen it. So, you know, one of the final things that we wanted to talk about today with Chrome and thinking about using Chrome for, for uh, education is that it's perfect for cloud computing. Not that you can't do this with other web browsers, but that sync feature is, is unique to Chrome and the fact that you can sync your web apps and it really is the continuous client, meaning that no matter where I am, no matter what computer I log into, as long as it has the Chrome browser, I can very easily sign in and I'm up and running within a couple of minutes. So I can be productive anywhere. And that's, you know, if I'm maybe um, busy at a hotel, I can use their computer. If I'm at a conference, I sign in and gain access to my stuff. Or for students, they can go to the library, um, you know, and, and if they have the Chrome browser, or even if they don't, you know, they can still easily access um, their app. Okay. And on that, just to piggyback off of that, what's really nice about Chrome, though, too, is that it's PC. It really it doesn't matter. Everything is web based. So those apps that you run, um, the extensions that you are running and doing, it, it's the same cross platform. So except for our kids who are working on some project at school and then want to continue that off at, at home, you're on. Uh, it's really versatile in that regard. Um, then I start working more with um, books and Google Sites and just that whole, whole Google Apps for Education package. That package with the um, extensions, I think it just really is efficient, but it makes things all cloud-based. And with that, I see a lot more um, seamless of the Chromebooks that are out now, um, a few districts been piloting them that I've worked with and absolutely love them because it's all web functionality. You need the infrastructure and the bandwidth to let those run, but those students can customize their apps um, as an add on a domain um, if you've got the quotes and using that agreement. Um, and if you have more questions, um, I'm sure Dan Becky can point you to the efforts. Um, Looks. But one of the nice things is I can put out apps. If I know there's some apps that are great for my third graders. I can make sure all of their logins have access to the app that I need. Um, those kids can home um, or they can pull out a Chromebook at school and in seriously eight seconds, if that, they are booted up, logged into their Google account. All of their apps are there. All, all their extensions are there. They can get right to work. Um, and they can also go home. and access those kind of things. So I need to worry if they don't have that software application at home. Um, it's just it's a great solution. Um, and it doesn't matter, like I said, it doesn't matter what device. I know when I was teaching before, kids had to be on one specific computer to edit their images or to work on a project because it was all local on that hard drive of that computer. Um, that's not the case with these books because everything is web-based. It's a saver for some of my districts. 
on what you were saying, Stacey, for me, or at least in my mind, it really, um, you know, levels the playing field for everybody. It's not a matter of, you know, what platform you have, if you have the latest hardware, um, really regardless of whatever you're using, if you can run Chrome and you have access to those apps, you know, where you are. And the shift, I didn't think I'd tried it for a week, and I said, I'm not going to use my um, MacBook Pro for a week, and I'm just going to see if I can do everything web-based. And it's crazy because that's all I do 95% of the time. I don't know the last time I opened a, an action that wasn't web-based. Same way, you know, I, I tried, you know, a first for several weeks using the Chromebook, and then now, you know, everything I do is in the browser, whether it's photo or, you know, creating a presentation or, you know, anything, um, I'm always in Chrome. That's that's what I work out of. Okay, I'm going to jump in. The last slide, we have a bunch of web apps um, I'm going to share with you. Here they are. Um, link, because we only had a limited amount of time. So what um, I did is went and added some of our other favorites. Um, so here's a list of other web apps. Another one um, that I play with after talked to me about it was Slack. Uh, and that one is great for creating presentations. So um, you can do some, it's a little easier than the presentation in Google um, Docs is right now. So it's a really nice web app. Um, Aviary, as Sean mentioned before, has some apps um, for editing, but they also have some stuff for video. And that can be added to your domain also, um, just to let heads up there. So we did some social working apps here and just some other miscellaneous favorites I have. I don't know if you want to highlight here, Sean? I think the ones that you, you mentioned, the slide rocket and the, and the aviary, and they do have a wide range of, of different apps, not just for photo editing. I think there's a couple other ones besides the sound editing as well. But go time playing because these are there's everything. Let me find on list. This is what is fun too. Um, we also come up with a list of extensions. There are shortcuts if you are you can see my browser up at the top right now that I'm running Chrome. Um, I do have like a shortcut for my Gmail, um, so I will notify or my calendar doc. Shortcut there. Um, there are a bunch for your task list is there. What a lot of these Sean mentioned in his are they're all listed here on this document, this Google Doc as well. So take a look. Um, and I was in that copy without formatting that you were just kind of scrolling through. That one's really good. You know, if you yeah. find something on another site or, you know, something you're going to copy into another document, it just strips out the formatting. Um, so if you're, you know, pasting something from an email, whatever you happen to be doing, it'll just, you know, take out, you know, if it's bold or italics or a different font, strips it out, and you can paste it into what you're working on. That one. I'm going to add that one. Uh, what else? Is here. Um, our open attribute. I, I just want to mention it. Um, someone with me, and I haven't had a real need to use it quite yet this year. But if you're searching web pages, it'll um, pop up for you. And if you click on it, it will give you the um, information to cite that image or cite that website. And especially if they're in Creative Commons. Um, it would be the embed code that you can use to embed that image into a site. So just want to be able to it. Same time. Extensions here. I'm sure this list will be growing, and we will keep adding to it um, as we increment and use some more of these. Um, Google was what Sean and I both said we use Google Voice all the time, and up at the top of my browser, you can see here's a quick link right to um, my Google Voice, so I can call, text message, whatever, right from here. And I love Voice for kids calling and reading and fluency checks and like 
kind of stuff. So it's really nice to have that launch right here for my browser too. So I can link to kids, if they call the Google Voice number, I can listen to it right from my extension. Okay, I'll jump back. Sorry, guys. Jump to our slide and see what is there. Those are um, let me just I think else I'll, I'll mention too about Chrome is that you know I don't know um, <clears throat> you know you who are watching this uh, webinar today or I guess watching in the future if you're thinking about you know deploying Chrome in in your school or in your district they do have Chrome for Business which will allow you to set up web apps that you want to have installed and which extensions and really customize it uh, for uh, your personal you know for for whatever your situation happens to be. Oh, here is a resource on that list, too, about why I use Chrome. So it's a lot of those things Sean and switching with, just highlights on the browser itself. Um, and to mention, to get to the Chrome store, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, but if you go to open up a new tab, that will automatically launch you to all of your web apps. Up, will show up there for you, and then there's an icon there to get to the store. So just simply jump into a new tab. You are in that store to start searching um, for apps or extensions or various themes for Chrome to customize it. Jump Contact information is at the end of this it'll be up. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to me. I know you can contact Sean as well. What else can you say? I have started using this more and more, and I just love it. I'm telling everybody you, you've got to put it on your machine just for that. Basically, if you don't want to use the apps and the extensions, just the fact you can sync those bookmarks and have those. Figure out is just a huge plus to get started. If there's any, I guess, questions? Sure. Great. Um, that was very informative. Uh, I learned a lot of you know tips and tricks I didn't know before. Um, I'm not seeing any questions yet in the Q and A window. Um, so please put your questions at about Chrome or Google Apps for Education there in the Q and A window, and I'll be sure to relay them. Somebody just said something to me about finding that open attribute. When you are typing in those extensions, um, try using the link um, with this presentation, or some of them are one word. So I don't remember if um, open attribute is that way, but it might just be one word. Like really picky about that when you're searching the store. Okay, a couple questions. Can you monitor what apps your students add to their Chromebook? Stacey, do you want to answer it? Go ahead. Um, if you um, lease your Chromebooks through Google, um, with that, you would be able to get a control panel where you would specify what apps put on those Chromebooks. So you deploy the apps that you want to have on there. You know, students will sign in, but then they would not have the ability themselves to install any of the extensions or any of <clears> the <throat> web apps that you blacklisted. So you would have complete control of that ecosystem um, by, you know, getting those through Google. Awesome. Questions. We asked our ICT company to install Google Chrome, um, but they said that Google Chrome for Business is only a method to install Google Chrome at once. Um, and that there is no option to make different settings for different user groups. How would um, they go about using that to make the different settings for the user groups? 
there's a, a couple of options. One would be that you could use Chrome Frame, which runs in IE, and I don't believe you have to have admin rights to install it, although I'm not suggesting that you go ahead and install it, I guess, without an admin's permission. But that's one option. But I, I'm pretty sure uh, with business that you can set up different policies per group, although I'm not 100%, you know, I'm about to sure that's true. And to you know, plug Chromebooks one more time. Um, you know, the easiest way to set up the different policies and the different apps for your different user groups is if they are using Chrome on the Chromebook management console. I just think it's such a slick feature, especially as we have start thinking about uh, item deployment and having a keyboard with those Chromebooks and apps is just that made a world of difference. For some of them, as they're starting to think about where they're going to invest. Questions coming, guys. <laughs> um, had a question come up privately in chat about Chromebooks adopted um, in our area. We have um, three districts that have started um, pilot U, and um, since they are kind of new, I think. Right. So we've got pilot, and we've got some that are really seriously considering using these for a one-to-one -one rollout. Exploring options right now. We find information about policies in the user group. Um, John, do you know, or Becky? Yeah, in, uh, in the Q and A uh, transcript, will be typed up and we'll email it out to you. So we'll follow up a little bit more with the Chrome team uh, to make sure that we have the best answer for you. Um, so look for that question um, in the Q and A transcript. Okay. For the iPad. I don't know what, I've looked for one, and there is one that's kind of similar, but it is not a Chrome app for the iPad. It looks kind of can feel, but it's not Chrome to sync, so that's aware of. Yeah, and you're talking about there's one called iChromey, which I think switched to Digo browser. I think it's the name of it, and yeah, it doesn't sync. I mean, it, it has the, the Omnibox that you can type in your search and also put in URL, but, but yeah, it's only not the, the whole Chrome experience. They're on a cart. Can you have different settings for different grades? It does if they're on a cart because it the thing goes with that user account. So if I'm a third grader and I log into Chrome, I'm going to get my third grade settings, and if it picks up that exact same Chromebook later, they're getting. So much for the list of webs, and we'll definitely uh, send you the link to the presentation, and so you can click on these links and additional resources. So you have all the web apps and extensions that we talked about today. And let me, if they want access to it right away, I'll get that first slide because there it is. Can you just oh, let's see. Can you discuss tools, application shortcuts on in within Chrome. Let me look and see what they're looking at. Down and let me open up Chrome and. We're going to go to the tool and application. Create a shortcut. I think if you're in that application, you can create those. Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. But it is 
that's a shortcut here, or is that create a shortcut in your extensions list? You don't know. I, I actually have never created one. You stuffed. Yeah, I either. <laughs> so. Um, one of the um, extension I just shared me last week was this mega button. And do you want to talk about this mega button, Sean? So the mega button just gives you quest to uh, some of the different settings under the rent. So you've got your downloads. If you click the puzzle piece, that's all of your extensions. Um, I believe the star is, is your bookmarks. Um, so it just gives you really quick access to some of those different things and, and areas of, of course so that you're not always having to go to the ranch and then scroll through and, and, and pick what you want to look at. You can just very easily do that um, with that mega button. So, yeah, it'll show you what's you know what extensions are running, um, you know how memory, all kinds of information. Uh, since we're on that topic, um, we have a question that asks: Is there any way to know which extension is giving a problem? if Chrome is frozen or stuck somehow? Um, do you see? You don't know, because usually if it does give me a problem, it'll, it'll alert me to the one it's updating or if there's a problem. So I don't know. You want to check out to make sure that all the extensions are up to date on the latest version. Um, and generally that will fix any issues that you may be having with it. The question is, do you have to use your laptop to sync across uh, mobile devices? Or can you use your a mobile device like an iPad or, or Zoom or Chromebook? Well, you're in the browser, so... Um, if, if the app itself syncs, that's one thing, because if that app is something you can just log into, you can access it on your mobile device without a problem. So that'll sync fine. But as far as thinking all the Chrome features, all your extensions and web apps, it's got to be on either like a Chromebook or a laptop or a desktop computer. If that was the question. I think there are. Oh, go ahead. I say I think there are some individual apps for Android. For example, I have Chrome Marks on, on my Android phone, which syncs all of my my, my marks in Chrome. Uh, and there's actually a an app for um, Tab Cloud, so that'll I can sync my tabs. Nice. You know, I've saved different sessions. But yeah, like Stacy said, in terms of being able to do that on a, on a mobile device, I think like a Zoom or an iPad, I don't believe there's a way to do that. I mean, you would have to I think have the full fledged Chrome browser. Set up like Pandora, for example, and I set that up on my um, iPad, and that's a syncable app. It'll sync right to my um, Chrome browser, iPad, phone, all that kind of stuff, and my HUD Touch. So it'll sync across that way. Great. Another question: Can families lease Chromebooks sponsored for the school? Basically, the district can't afford them, but parents can pay the monthly fee. Um, could we get the school uh, controlling the environment? So I can go ahead and take that right now. Um, our sales team leases Chromebooks to uh, schools and districts and you know other organizations, and we don't really have a um, plan in place to lease to individual families and have it still be controlled by the school. That said, uh, if that were to happen, um, a school could definitely, um, or a parent could definitely purchase a Chromebook for their student, and if the school is using Google Apps for Education, the student would be able to log in using their Google Apps account. Um, the environment may not be able to be managed by the school, but it's definitely an interesting idea that I will you know, bring forth to the Chromebook team. And the question, this will be our last question since we're um, heading right to on about 4 o'clock Pacific time. But are there any tips from about cold flags? 
So in the URL bar, um, there's a flag. If you ask that question, you know, it'd be really helpful if you could expand on it a little bit more. I know um, if if you type that in, those there are some experimental features that you can turn off and on. You know, depending on the build of Chrome you're using. Um, so if you're using the beta or the Canary build of Chrome, um, but that's not something that I've ever played around with. I always try to use the stable panel or the stable version of Chrome. To make sure everything works. That's, yeah, that's my experience too. So I can't speak to that. Well, this has certainly been, you know, very informative, and I'm looking forward to reviewing the webinar again and um, you know, learning a little bit more about the apps and extensions. So, thank you, Sean and Stacy, for joining us today and for leading this webinar. Um, and we look forward to having all of our attendees um, on a webinar in the future. So, thank you all very much.